North Korean troops are likely to suffer heavy losses in Ukraine, potentially exceeding those of Russia. Estonian Colonel Ants Kiviselg, head of the Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center, told the Estonian public broadcaster ERR. The first North Korean soldiers were deployed to Russia's Kursk Oblast in late October, Ukraine's military intelligence reported earlier. North Korea has sent nearly 12,000 troops to Russia, including 500 officers and three generals, according to HUR. The North Korean soldiers are usually trained to fight in mountainous terrain, which means they are not familiar with Ukrainian territory, its climate and geography, Kiviselg said. The training does not include combat operations in such conditions, and the training they receive in the Russian Federation is certainly not of a very high level, Kiviselg said. Therefore, we can expect North Korean units to suffer heavy losses in Ukraine and probably even more than the Russian Federation's forces have suffered so far. He said that the North Korean troops arrived in Kursk Oblast in early October, having previously undergone two to four weeks of training. Following this, North Korean soldiers redeployed to the Ukrainian front, Kiviselg added. The arrival of North Korean soldiers on the Ukrainian front will likely take place in stages, Kiviselg said. In this additional deployment of North Korean units in Russia, their training and then arrival on the Ukrainian front continues in the long term. It could certainly bring some changes to the front line. Some 8,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia's Kursk Oblast to participate in the war against Ukraine, according to U.S. intelligence. According to the Financial Times, Ukrainian intelligence officials are skeptical regarding the combat effectiveness of the North Korean troops, citing communication issues with their Russian counterparts as the main hurdle Moscow and Pyongyang will have to bridge. North Korea's entry into the war comes when Russia's long and grinding campaign in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk Oblast has dramatically gained pace in recent days. Analysts say Russian forces are advancing at a pace not seen since the early months of the war. North Korea will back Russia until it receives victory in the Ukraine war, Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui said on Friday at talks in Moscow with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Our traditional historically friendly relations, which have traveled the tested path of history, today are rising to a new level of relations of invincible military comradeship, she told Lavrov, praising Vladimir Putin's wise leadership in the war. Vice President Kamala Harris on Friday cast former President Donald Trump as an angry man who has exhausted Americans with his focus on division in a speech at an International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Labor Union Hall in Janesville, Wisconsin. After arguing, as she often does, that it is time to turn the page on a decade of Donald Trump, Harris put a finer point on the way she believes people feel about Trump's time in the national spotlight, folks are exhausted with this stuff. The man, Harris said, referring to Trump, is angry. She also said Trump was one of the biggest losers of manufacturing jobs in America's history, hanging on the word loser. Harris, who was flanked by IBEW workers, said Trump is all talk, no walk on unions, calling him no friend to labor and a union buster his entire career. He's got a lot of talk, but if you pay attention to what he's actually done, you'll see who he really is," she said, calling Trump an existential threat to America's labor movement. Union workers are important in a series of key swing states. While Democrats have long enjoyed the support of union leadership, Trump has improved Republican standing with rank-and-file union workers in both 2016 and 2020. Harris has closed her campaign by arguing that the former president is more focused on the people he believes have wronged him than the American people. And everything that we have fought for is on the line in this election. In less than 90 days, it's either going to be Donald Trump or me sitting in the Oval Office. But here's the thing that we want to help me. I appreciate you, brother. If you 
you're trying to kind of figure out what the stakes are, just imagine the Oval Office we've all seen it on TV. And just imagine on January 20th. Because if he is elected, if Donald Trump is elected, he's going to be sitting in that Oval Office stewing over his enemies list. Because he spends full time planting, plotting revenge and retribution. Full time. The man is angry. Right? It, it, but you know what I'm talking about. So imagine on January 20th, it's either that, him plotting over his enemies list, or me, working for you on my to-do list. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Because I like hard work. And remember, he said he was the only one. You know how he talks. He said he, he was the only one who could bring back America's manufacturing jobs. And then, America lost nearly 200,000 manufacturing jobs when he was president, including thousands of jobs right here in Wisconsin. And, and, and facts be clear, those losses started before the pandemic, okay? Making Donald Trump one of the biggest losers of manufacturing jobs in America's history.